love was, was so sweet to me. She embraced me. She was like my first New York friend. And we were like chilling out in Morgan Freeman's Upper, Man Upper West Side, Manhattan, Brownstone. We've been to his condo. We were just, you know, having fun and chilling. And, and this is great for me because, you know, you hear about the legend of Morgan Freeman and the culture of, of that. And to be that close to it was, was crazy. And so eventually she introduced us, and I sat backstage and, and watched him read the New York Times as he ate his salad and, and did his crossroad cross road puzzle, crossword puzzle. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, it was a connection. I was invited into a family. And so we took that relationship all the way back to Mississippi. But going back, I finished CalArts, and I remember getting my diploma, and this, this lady by the name of Sharon, I, I didn't even know Sharon hated me, but Sharon told me when I got my diploma, she said, I never thought I would see this day. Wow. And I'm like, why is she throwing shade at me? Like, I always had a 4.0, and I always had good grades, and you know, like, how's she going to play me like I'm like one of the sketchy kids? <laughs> she tried it. But <laughs> she did, but God bless her because I felt so low between my classmates dogging me out and the acting company dogging me out. I've been through this dog that relationship. You got to read about that in the book. <laughs> and like just through some stuff, y'all wouldn't believe me. Like if my family knew some of the things that I was going through, some of the things that the Lord was taking me through, I really think they would have been clutching their pearls, you know, if this, if this is something they could watch on reality TV. That's why like, I had to go to LA. You know, and I couldn't tell them all the things that I was going through because I didn't want them to worry and I didn't want anybody to come and get me, honey. Like, no, <laughs> let me stay here. So, you know, I made it work. And um, God made his point about that whole experience. When I graduated in May, I was on Everybody's TV International by July. Mm -hmm. You know, and that means I beat... Condola Rashad and all those other Hollywood kids on TV. You know, that was God saying to me, I've got your back, kid. And you know, all of my advisors, they told me I wasn't talented. Like, we we're trying to pick our monologues to get agents preparing for a showcase. Nothing that I did was ever successful that I brought. I would have to come and stand up in front of a company of actors just like you. Undergrad, grad, all distinguished, you know, my father is, you know, Denzel Washington, you know, all those type of people. And and I would get so slammed, like they hated me, like <laughs> they really would just, you know, eradicate any talent to, any talent that, that they felt that I felt that I had. And uh, you know, seeing myself on that Blackberry commercial just solidified every dream that I had. I said, God, if you take me out today and I don't do nothing else, I did this for Chula. Because when I had that dream and I was in Chula, there wasn't anybody on TV that I looked to and, and, and somebody six degrees of separation knew that person. You know, I, I wasn't six degrees of separation from anybody on my TV. And now when I watch TV, I'm no more than one degree of separation from most major celebrities. If not, you know, like me and Morgan Freeman, no degrees of separation, you know? So, you know, that's crazy. And I view celebrities like regular people. You know, it's fun to talk about them, but they really are regular people. And I don't put them on this pedestal, but they're fun to me, you know, and fun to see. Um, so I did that, and I thought, okay, well, great. I made it onto TV. I'm going to be a star, you know. I'm about to get the Denzel thing on, you know. They're about to be blowing up my phone, you know. I